Hi, welcome to the Brick Filmers Guild podcast, hosted by us, the Four Monkeys. On this podcast, we had the extreme pleasure of chatting with Akash Jones of Akash Lego Productions. Akash Lego Productions has nearly 200,000 subscribers and well over 100 million views. He is mostly known for his Marvel and DC superhero brick films, but also has brilliant videos outside the genre. Akash also has a very notable Instagram following of around 25,000. This podcast is sponsored by Brickstuff. Brickstuff makes the smallest commercially available lights for Lego models, and their wires are the thinnest available. You can snap Lego bricks, plates, and tiles directly on top of the lights and wires. You can hide them in anything you build, and there's no electronics experience needed. Check out Brickstuff Lights at www.brickstuff.com and see how to take your builds and brick films to the next level. This podcast is also sponsored by Bricker. Bricker is an add-on for the free software Blender that converts any 3D object into a photorealistic, buildable Lego sculpture. You can also use Bricker to generate awesome Lego animations such as rivers, explosions, motion graphics, and more. We were amazed with the stunning brick animations and renders that we made utilizing Bricker and other Blender plugins by Bricks Brought to Life. His other must-have add-ons are ABS Plastic Lego Materials, which makes the Blender models look like real Lego bricks, and Assemble Me, which is Lego animation made easy. Learn more at BricksBroughtToLife.com. If you would like to help support our podcast, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter. Get podcasts at least a week before anyone else and other perks only available to our Patreon supporters. So, without further ado, here's our conversation with Akash. Good morning, Akash. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. This is really cool to to get to know you. Um, I think I personally probably have only just gotten to know you in the past year or so, um, whereas yeah. everyone else has known you for quite a long time, probably since 2014, 2014. when you got your channel started. Yeah. Um, and, and wow, you have just taken off. You have <laughs> 170,000 subscribers. Yeah. And wow. over 114 million views. Yeah, it's that, crazy. That is crazy. Only since 2014. That is just unbelievable. And obviously um, totally deserving. So Thank it's you. neat. And, and you've been you've been so sweet to, to correspond with as well. I've actually really enjoyed it. You even gave me a little message from school this morning. And I was like, oh gosh, it's just so sweet. Yeah, it's like etiquette, you know, me and my mom. Well, like, kudos to your mom. Yeah. You... you, you been really nice so all right so we're gonna um oh yeah since you were in school let's let's get into your your school you're in university right now yeah second year second year and what are you studying i'm studying film well that's cool and obviously <laughs> apparent in your videos have you found it like really helpful did you go specifically because you kind of got into it um in 2014 you realized this is the the road you wanted to the path you wanted to take yeah, I've been like I've been into film longer than I have been into brick films. Like I was making friend videos with my friends and stuff, but brick films is what really got me interested. And in. I was like, okay, yeah, I really like storytelling, and that's when I realized I wanted to go into film directly. And storytelling, I mean, seriously, I mean, even when you first started, um, you know, your your brick filming was was good for a beginner, but your storytelling, I mean, you obviously have loads of, of story to tell in your mind, and that was very apparent in, in your films. Mm -hmm. so I think that's job. one of the main things that drew people to my channel, just like the how I did, like, storylines. Yeah, I think a lot of people have a hard time, and they're like, where do you get your stories from, or can you give me some ideas, but... You obviously don't need that help. So, I mean, that's a talent right there in itself. <clears throat> Thank you. So what university are you going to? Um, Ryerson University. It's in Toronto. And are you enjoying that? Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty fun. I've met a lot of people, so. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into Lego? I mean, did you see some somebody's films that inspired you there, or you just had Lego and... 
Uh, yeah, I watched on like the Clone Wars. I've, everyone knows the Clone Wars. Uh-huh. Right. I watched the Clone Wars really like when it first came out, and it just I had a lot of Star Wars Lego. I had like no Marvel Lego actually, and the Clone Wars just really inspired me to make like because I had all the characters that were in the Clone Wars, and I just really wanted to make my own story because when I was watching it, I like imagined how things could play out or stuff that I wanted to see. And then obviously, like watching people like Fancy Pants, Forest Fire, I saw they were all doing it, so I took like the Star Wars Lego that I had and decided that I wanted to make brick films. That's awesome. Um, did, did you teach yourself how to brick film or did you watch somebody's videos for uh, tutorials? Um, how did you learn? I, I taught myself. I didn't really know there were all these great tutorials out there till like 2016 or like in my later years of brick filming when I started connecting with like everyone else. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was mostly self-taught. Me and my friend, we just experimented for a long time. Yeah. Um, some of your first ones, uh, first videos you made in 2014, um, really had a, got a, a lot of cool um, effects that you did. Uh, even though you were just learning, you, you, you really had some cool co- uh, things that you did. You did a lot of support with clear blocks, which you probably um, uh, mask out now, but um, it still it still worked. Um, I, uh, you did a lot of uh, gun flash uh, with like the little translucent uh, one by cones. Um, mm-hmm. You did that well. Uh, you experiment a lot with uh, clay blood, um, yeah. which uh, you did successfully. Um, Definitely. Um, another thing you did, I think it was in uh, your video, Lego Sinister 6 Part 1, um, and you did it throughout a lot of these, is um, uh, your interaction between your minifigure or things and the ground. I think the, this character was pushed back or thrown back, and he put his claw down, and it actually made a scrape mark on the yeah. ground. Uh, I thought that was a really cool effect. And another thing you, you've done a lot well from the beginning, and you still do well, extremely well, is you do a lot of outer socket uh, arm animation. Yeah. Um, and, um, that's you do a great job on great that. Great job with that. I, and it's a pain in the butt to do that. So um, <laughs> yeah. the fact that you're doing it well is, is, is awesome. So um, I know when you first started out, you were using like what, like a, your phone or an iPad? Yeah, my iPad. It's always still my iPad to this day. Oh wow! So you really? You have not switched over because I think no. I, I thought I heard you got a, a higher in camera, but you're still using your iPad. Yeah, I did get a camera. I don't know. Just something about the iPad is so like comfortable since it's what I started with. Everything is just a lot more efficient. Do you ever have any issues when you're, I guess, taking the picture and you have to touch the iPad? That does it move a little, or how do you keep that iPad from jiggling a little when you actually have to touch the screen to take a picture? I plug my headphones in, like my Apple earphones, Uh and if you click the volume up button on the earphones, it takes a photo for you. So it's kind of like a remote in a way. That's super awesome. What program were you using back in the early days on your uh, iPhone or your iPad? Uh, The first thing I used was, it's like Lego has an app. It's called like Lego Movie Maker, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I played with it once or twice. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it's like specifically for stop motion. That's what I used at first. Mm -hmm. And you're not using that anymore? No, now I use Stop Motion Studios Pro. Stop Motion Studios Pro, and that's for the um, iPad. Okay, that, cool. I'm, I'm blown away that you're still using your iPad because when kind of when you went from the 2014 and then jumped to the 2016 and now, I mean, you see a huge difference. And and yeah, I'm blown away that that's what you're using. So I mean, look, people. I mean, you don't have to buy these super expensive cameras. Look what what Akash does with with an iPad. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like. I guess it's not like too affordable compared to the other options, but it's more accessible. Like a lot of kids can brick film now that it's just like right on your phone or your iPad. Mm-hmm. And it also means you can do it anywhere too. That's true. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. I did brick film on a plane once. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was sitting in my seat and I made a short video. That's a great that's way a great... to pass the time. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, Wait, while here, I'm gonna, I'm going, I'm going off track here. We we bounce around, and you're welcome to to chime in with whatever story or fun thing because that that was cool right there. Um, back in the beginning, you did some um, videos. I'm assuming with your sister. Yeah, a lot with my sister. Yeah, and um, that that was really cool. So like you were doing her, you make up things. Is that anything that you learned in school, or was that just something you were helping her out with? Because I found it great. You guys obviously are very close, and it was really cute to to see you guys working together yeah she just really wanted like to get more fans involved and i guess like my name back then brought a few more viewers in so technically my sister used me for clickbait but it's okay (laughs) (laughs) well one of the um videos that was really fun to watch was your saltine challenge 
Oh yeah. We were laughing watching that, and and then you were you were so excited because you had five thousand subscribers. Yeah. Now you have over a seventy, a hundred and seventy thousand. So how does that feel now? I don't know. I feel like I almost didn't appreciate it at the time. Like being a kid, I don't. I feel like you don't really realize how much like views and stuff is coming in until you grow up. Like looking back at it now, like I was like my one video, The Incredible Hulk, that has like a lot of views. Like it's so many views, I just couldn't fathom it as a kid. It was like it didn't really click with me, you know? Right. Now, like my help- parents kept telling me, but I never really realized it until now. Like it's a lot of people, yeah. So obviously they're very supportive. Mm-hmm. Do you have other siblings as well? No, just one sister. And does she help you in your videos or voice for you or, or do any of your stop motion? Yeah, she used to voice for me a lot back then. And she, a lot of the Lego that I own is hers, actually. She used to collect all the like the city and the police stuff. So most of the Lego I use now is hers, actually. Wow. Awesome. That's awesome. I know... Yeah, in uh, 2014 probably was the year that you probably put the most videos out and you've taken a little more time on your videos, but I think you had over 60 videos or so uh, that first year in 2014. Did you ever leave your, your I guess, your bedroom or your studio that year? <laughs> wow, I don't even I didn't even realize that I put that many out. Oh, it's crazy. That's a crazy amount. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's just because like, once you start, you get like, you're so into it. Mm-hmm. And you have to like build because the beginning of the YouTube career, I guess, is the most important. Evidently, that did the job because doing that many videos and then uh, you just increasingly getting better and you you do about 10 to 20 a year or so now. Um, But yeah, getting a lot done at the beginning definitely got a lot of attention brought your way. And you and you you had some great um, techniques back in the day, uh, too. So, um, you know, you were making good stuff then. Thank Um, you. But, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the limitations that I had kind of helped me creatively because all the effects and stuff like the practical effects with the blood and the bricks and like even drawing some of the effects. Like I don't know if you saw one of my videos where I like drew an explosion with the draw tool. Mm. Like that was more because I wasn't as proficient in like visual effects. So I had to like use what I could like grasp. But I think it did help in the long run because I had to be a little more creative. And even just like not having that much Lego, I don't know if you realize half of my videos from the start are in that same exact forest, like with that green base plate. Mm -hmm. And it's like not having a lot, I guess, cultivated my skills a bit more. Sometimes your limitations can make you get creative on on what you can uh, get away and do. So uh, yeah. Um, you, if you didn't know how to do something, you didn't always find a video, you figured out how to do it on your own. Um, uh, I think one of the, um, things in one of your first videos that uh you did is someone was eating some food um and it uh it just really translated well as a um as a when when the the bike got smaller as the i think it was lego hawkeye um gets the day off uh the Uh bike got smaller as he eaten and and then i think in another video uh someone was eating an apple Thor was eating an apple and it actually left like green residue on his face you yeah. left play-doh so and that that really yeah worked your too. food eating skills are like really cool <laughs> so that, yeah, that was just, pretty cool i just love all that like little intricate stuff like i'm one video where i just had someone mixing something i don't know i just love like like the use of clay and bits in videos i don't know how to describe it yeah that's one of the things i did mark down is you you use clay a lot and i loved how you use clay in your videos it, it definitely gave a fluidness um um to the, no, either. I mean, it's a great effect for, yeah. and, and I know I'm talking about the coffee thing and whether you wrote that down on one of the, what which video it was, but like you actually put clay in the coffee and then even oh. when you're like pouring a drink, you use it and I've not seen that or at least not that I remember and I thought it just looked amazing. It makes it look so real. Mm-hmm. So I love that. I think that was, uh, was the, oh, the mug here the, the it mug is. in one day. One day. Yeah. yeah. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Um, so do you storyboard? You have all these like great um, stories in your head. Do you do you storyboard, or you just kind of go um, rogue as far as? I like I don't really storyboard, but I take sh- I take like quick photos to just plan out like the blocking of all the scenes. Like for one day, I had like I think ten photos where it was just like in the field by the house, just so I can set. And I guess it is like a photo storyboard rather okay. than drawing. Okay, so you still had a little bit of a planning process. It wasn't completely uh, just making it up on the fly. 
Yeah. Although you do that a little bit in order to have spontaneity kind of in your animation. Does that sound correct? Yeah, I do that a lot, actually, especially with fight scenes. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes that, and you, you just can't always, you think you can try to get the figure or whatever to do something, but gravity and everything kind of forces you into certain corners, or, or myself at least, so you just kind of have to make a little up as you go anyway, even if you've storyboarded it. Yeah, that's true. Cool. Well, your um, most popular ch uh, videos on your channel is the the Lego Hulk you mentioned earlier. That has 37 million uh, views. Um, and then that led into the Lego Avengers versus the Hulk, which has 15 million views, or almost 16 million. And then you also did a uh, Lego Batman versus Superman, Donna Justice, that has 4.2 million, which is... Uh, not chump change. Awesome, um, huge yeah, videos on your on your channel. I, I absolutely love the Batman Superman one. Yeah, that's actually my favorite video of mine. Yeah, it, it just had some some really awesome uh, action in it. Um, some I think some of your action shots just are, are just killer. Um, Thank you. One of the uh, shots that uh, definitely brought our uh, attention was uh, I think Wolverine lighting a cigar. Oh, which video is that? that Lego was, Avengers. I think you did it Hulk. twice, but the one we wrote a note on here was the Lego Avengers versus Hulk. But you might oh, have done yeah. it more recently. Um, yeah, you used like a lighter to light the cigar, and then you could actually see the cigar lit up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Um, I think if the one you're referring to, I think I used like a one by one plate, right? Mm -hmm. And then he just like lights the, it was a cut piece, like just a stick, a brown stick that I cut and mm -hmm. then I colored it with Sharpie a little to give it like a burnt look mm -hmm. and then just placed like an orange light on it. So that in post, or did you yeah. actually do that in, in camera? I, the orange light was in post. Okay. In post. Okay. Yeah. And then he yeah. even throws it on the ground and steps on it, I assume with clay and wishes it down in there, which was just yeah. really cool. Yeah, this is this was. Um, yeah, the Lego, uh, the Incredible Hulk. Um, the, I like your your use of clay for the bed sheets. I think that's oh. a cool look. Mm -hmm. um, that and then I think um, that one also had you had a great voice actor in the Incredible Hulk. I think Amber, Amber Rose. Rose. Does that sound correct? Um, I might have written down the name wrong, but uh, she was and then uh, the peeling of the apples. Yeah, the slicing of the, the apple slicing was of the apples really, looked great. Yeah, and that it's was just I, I don't think I've seen clay used so much and so well. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it really works in your videos. Yeah, I try to sneak it in the right can. Yeah. I love the uh, the fight um, with Ant-Man um, going into the Hulk in um, Lego Avengers. And I think in another, I'm not sure if it was that video or a different video, when the Ant-Man was in his large um, uh, size and they, he was, I think, grabbing somebody. That was pretty cool. Was that fun to animate the uh, large Ant-Man figure? Yeah, it was. It was tricky, though. I've... I haven't really done a lot of the animation with the bigger figures, mm -hmm. so like just like getting him to stand and stuff was tricky. But yeah, yeah, okay. sometimes got to use a lot of supports and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, talking of the big figures, you have the fight between the Hulk and the. Well, that's that's a little um, that's a later. different different video. Um, although you have used the uh, I get I don't know what we would call those. They're not mini figures. They're kind of like. Um, the, the, the Hulk and like the Thanos figure what what are those called yeah big figures big figures you know they're like <laughs> small dolls non or whatever <laughs> non mini figures but bigger mini figures um, you've you've used those extensively um, in uh, some of your brick films I think you have the Hulk you have Thanos you have uh, the Thing and I think maybe one other one yeah um, Gorilla Grodd I think uh, yeah but um, I the one that I liked the most uh, definitely was the uh, Thanos versus Hulk. Um, uh, that was more recently, that would have been done than last year in the summer of 2018. Um, you, but you did a lot of, you pulled the Hulk's arms out and you did a lot of, uh, clay, um, to hold his arms in place, but just the energy of the punching, uh, just the punching and the camera shake, uh, was super yeah, awesome. the whole set movie, I mean, you could really <clears throat> feel the power of their punches with each, with each yeah, other. Yeah. Did you shake the set in a way, or did you do a lot of that in post, the, the jiggle yeah, and the punches? I try to do all of that in camera just so I can see what it's looking like. So when I'm taking the photo, mm -hmm. like where I told you earlier that I click my headphone for the button, that's when I'll actually tap the iPad and like shake it if I can to get like that effect. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> so you use the weakness of it to be a strength. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah that's, that's cool. And, um, uh, you also, um, I want to kind of put some shout outs in here to a few folks that are actually members of the Brick Members Guild. I think Eggy Yoke 2002 did some uh, sound design assist assistance in that one. 
Yeah, he did. What kind of what kind of help did he do for that? He sent me like a. Re- I use his what he sent me for like all my brick films. He sent me a really big Google Drive with just like plenty of good sound effects for like fighting scenes, ambiance, and all that. Cool, cool. And who does the music? Because I notice a lot of piano playing. Piano. And, and I don't know if that's you playing or um, if someone else is creating that for you. The piano? Oh no, that's probably just a royalty for each track. Okay. Okay. A lot of good music. And we'll go back to where we were. Um, <laughs> I threw you off course. Yeah, oh, sorry. You, you threw me that. off course. I'm Kim. such a female. I know. <laughs> Another thing I liked uh, in your Batman, Superman, Donna Justice. I think Batman putting on his gloves. And you know, getting all dressed at the beginning, you use clay, um, and it yeah. just really gave the impression that he's really sticking gloves on. It was cool. Um, See, I think that's another just good tip. That's another great way of doing an effect that really works using clay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liked a lot of the windows coming through, um, or the light coming through the windows. Um, what kind of lights do you use to to light your set? I use about like three to four just desk lamps usually mm-hmm. with like a filter over it, like a colored paper or just like sheets to double the light. What are those called? They're like baking sheets. Baking sheets? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the paper that you put on a baking pan. Oh, uh, parchment paper? Yeah. Yeah. So you do that just to kind of dull it. Um, what about to color your light? To color my light, I have either a colored bulb, like for Avengers vs. Hulk, I had colored bulbs. Mm-hmm. I mean, for the Hulk vs. Thanos, I had colored mm-hmm. bulbs, but usually it's just like a paper. Okay. Do you like, use any uh, little small LED lights on your set ever? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Parchment paper, I, I don't know, that's actually a really good idea because that would withstand the heat. You know, I know bulbs tend yeah. to get warm and parchment paper, paper is used for baking, yeah. Um, and cooking, which I use actually quite often. That's a great idea. Well, courtesy of my mother. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> um, and I know, I know you can use like, uh, I guess it's the thin, um, what's the paper that has, it's colored paper, but you can, it's translucent. You can stick that over a light and that would work the too. Gels, whatever it's not, well, there's regular, regular gels that are used for, for film and television, which I'm sure you've gotten your hands on um, at school. Um, but you just, just, it's like, Tissue paper, color tissue paper. Well, wrapping, like that you put in gift bags? Kind of, yeah, like that stuff. That stuff would work, too. Yeah. Um, um, Ryle Force. I uh, used to use, like, idea. school, div- like, um, you know when kids buy dividers for their binders for mm-hmm. school? Yeah. Yeah, I used to use those because they're, like, kind of tinted and mm-hmm. colored. Where do you do your brick filming? Um, in my basement. Okay. It used to be in my room, but now it's in the room. Yeah, you had a couple of uh, behind the scenes or some uh, update videos where you were walking around your room discussing your upcoming projects, and you had uh, basically um, not only just Lego um, stuff for like Marvel and DC, but just even other stuff in there. Everything was just like, I don't know how you had room to even sleep in there. Yeah. (laughs) I have quite quite a collection, quite a collection. Yeah, Dave was drooling at your Lego collection for sure. Yeah, I've had to move a lot of it to my basement. Well, it's better lighting down there, I'm sure. Or better That's lack true. of lighting. Or lack of lighting, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not windows, yeah. All right, plus, obviously, I'm sure a lot more room. Yeah, but then, now that I'm in the basement, like, every single time I'm animating, there's a spider in one of my sets. Oh, uh, oh. not good. I, I hate spiders. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so going down this. You, you actually do get a lot of um, a lot of your videos. I noticed just incredible um, voice acting cast, which is really nice and really helps um, videos a lot, um, especially in Black Panther. Throne of Wakanda. Yeah, I mean, uh, amazing video. I mean, that pretty much had everything that you would want in, in a, a brick film. film. It was awesome. But to have Thanks. the voicing on top of that was. Um, that was just incredible. I'm just curious. Were they friends of yours? Were they putting on those accents? Because they all sounded like they came from the same place. They got, like, from Wakanda. Yeah, that video was hard to cast. Like, the delay was mostly due to the fact that I couldn't find voice actors. The, a few of them were members of the Marvel Brick Film universe that we have for, like, a set voice actor for. Oh, okay. The other two were my uncles. They're, like, they're African. So they don't actually have those accents, but they put them on. And they did a pretty good job. And then 
the female ones I had to put out a casting call for in my school, and then I got someone who responded, and she was actually Asian. Oh wow! Wow. <laughs> she put on an accent as well. Well, like I said, that with with just everything you could want in a in a you know the sets and the lighting. Um, that was the one that had those um, the flying. The sure. birds, the birds that were. Oh, there was a sort out. of a. It was a. Uh, it was a setup shot for a scene at the palace, and there was some like it looked like a cartoon background. Yeah. And some birds flying. How how was that made? That was made by uh, Jampot Studio Films. Okay, and I did want to bring up Jack. Uh, that's Jack Rizzo. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, Jack Rizzo. Okay, yeah. and he, he co-wrote did. that. Is that correct? Yeah, well, he did. Awesome, awesome. Well, shout out to Jack. Um, yeah. And so he made those backgrounds. Yeah. That's cool. And in the background that you also used, the, the static background, um, did he make those also that were kind of behind the set to, to look like the hill, hills and stuff in the background? Oh, no. Those are just like some basic ones that I have. Okay. Those look great. Those look great. I'm, I'm a huge fan of using um, um, printed backgrounds. Um, yeah. Sometimes green screening, it works, but also can get you in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. I like just having everything like right there in screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just what it's going to look like. I'm curious about the gorilla costume because Dave said it looked like a stormtrooper. <laughs> Is that what it was? Is it a combination of a couple things? Yeah, it's like the Chima head, this white gorilla Chima head. So that came from the Chima sets, okay. Yeah, I ordered like five of them, and then the bodies are just different colored clone outfits. Did any of those come from um, like the actual um, sets for the Black Panther? Beyond the Black Panther and a few of the main actors? Yeah, just the the main suit and that's it i think none of the gorilla things oh no nothing from the gorilla was from the actual that's awesome you source different things and really made it look like it truly fit that's cool yes cool cool uh and again the uh black panther removing his mask was killer killer i think he used clay for that um and that was awesome um the you had a a big fight in the armory Mm -hmm. um was that a difficult one to do, considering how many little small pieces of uh, weaponry were just sporadic in the set? Did you ever have any set bumps issues? Yeah, that one, that one was also difficult because since the video was taking really long to come out, mm-hmm. I actually brought the set with me to the condo that I live at okay. for school. So I animated it on like a wobbly glass table. So yeah, plus mm-hmm. all the little things that were in it. So that one was really hard. That took me a while. I didn't notice any problems with it, except for um, noticing it was probably just difficult to animate, but it was beautifully animated. It's just when I see things like that, I can just see my hand or something touching things and having set bumps everywhere. So, you know, you did a great job with that, um, especially considering you did it in a secondary uh, animation area. Mm-hmm. And the fact that that scene, like, it's like a continuous movement. Mm-hmm. That was just because like the set was moving on the table too much and just wobbling, so I decided to just keep it moving the entire time. Yeah, I find that if you like if you're especially if you're moving the camera, you can get away with a lot. Yeah. Right, right. Um I think some other things that I noted in that uh, a candle uh that was lit that was really cool and a pouring of uh, wine into the glass was really well animated. It's just it's beautiful movie. I, I, I really enjoyed that one. Me too. How long did it take you to, to do that one? Oh, thank you. It was like I think that one took that one took a while actually. A lot of it was pre production though. Like the actual animating editing was probably like maybe two months. But just writing it and everything before took a really long time. I think it was like almost a year. Wow. Well yeah. worth it. Totally worth the wait. You might even get some more uh views now with the couple of Oscars that it got. <laughs> That's true. Cool, cool. And I, I love, again, it's more of this out of arm posing, the sitting on the throne with the, out, the arms out, out of the socket. socket. Yeah, out of socket. Just, I love that pose. It just totally worked, the sitting on the throne. Mm. Cool, cool. Um, why don't we move on to uh, your uh, Tron uh, Legacy video. Loved it. Um, Thank you. Of course, we watched the Tron movie. A long time yeah, ago, I ha- so that brought back sadly, a Sadly, nice I haven't memories. seen the uh, the sequel to it, or the, I think there was uh, an animated series, um, so I'm not yeah. 100% um, there. I mean, I just remember the a movie from, what, 1981 or two, whenever it was. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, this, um, at the end of that, you put a, a channel ad for, I guess, one of your friends, Rad Visuals. Um, 
Did he help out with that video? Uh, no, but Nick is like, Rad Visuals is like the one brick drummer that I actually know in real life and like see a lot. Okay. Because, okay. yeah, he lives like, right, he lives really close to me actually, okay. considering where everyone else lives. I reached out to him the other day just because he was kind of a, a, a character in your story and I wanted to get to know him and he's now one of our new members of the Brick Filmers Guild and I look forward to uh, seeing his stuff. It's some really good um, um, animations that he's done. Yeah. Cool. So you've actually worked with, um, uh, you say Nick in person? Yeah, he's like lent me a lot of figures and stuff. Oh, cool. And he, whenever I'm animating, I'll just like send him stuff to get feedback. Cool, cool, cool. Nice it's to have good. someone to animate it's, with well, or, that, or have someone to animate ideas, and bounce yeah. ideas. It's kind of like you know Forrest and yeah. Sean, you know. Um, uh, so, have you worked on any other things kind of together? Have you animated together? We did animate one thing together. It was like a Suicide Squad thing, but it did never come out. Because oh, okay. he, had, he had, I don't have any of the Suicide Squad figures in Lego, and he just had, like, all of them. Mm -hmm. but yeah, he gave them off to me for a video. He posted, like, a part one, mm -hmm. and I was supposed to make a part two, but, yeah, that never happened. Well, you know. Um, so you you built the set for the Lego Tron. Um, it was, what, painted on uh, most of the set. There were some Lego elements of it. Um, how did you make that set? It was a really big piece of, like, just flat wood. Mm -hmm. on a table and then my dad painted it black i i did like the blue designs for the floor mm -hmm. and then and then my dad glossed it so it was like kind of shiny mm -hmm. and then the walls were just black construction paper painted as well that really worked so that was the, was the set probably what about three feet by three feet oh no the set was the set was taller than me so it was like six and a half feet wow oh wow yeah six and a half feet by like four so I assume you were working on that one in your uh, your basement, um, yeah. not at school. <laughs> yeah, that one was like against the wall. Cool, cool, cool. And I like the uh, the, the the life cycle trails. Um, how did you make those with like like plastic or? Yeah, those were like gels, like gel papers that I just cut into strips. Okay, okay, that's yeah, cool. that was an amazing effect. That looked that, great. That effect really, was really cool, and I liked when um, uh, the characters would throw their disc. It, it would uh, there would be extra Lego pieces as a part of the disc to show the um, the blur uh, of it moving through the air, and it was really cool. <laughs> Definitely like that one. Um, another one of your new uh, big popular ones. Um, is your Lego Avengers Infinity War Team Cap versus Black Order? Um, oh. Loved your lighting in that, and I think one of the things that definitely stood out is someone got thrown through a bench and the bench got torn up. That was cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, you've done a few, um, I guess. Uh, uh, what, is, what do they call those? Um, side by side trailer comparison type things where you've done trailers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you like do those? Uh, I like doing those usually when there's a movie that I like, that I'm really excited about that's coming out, but I can't make like a direct film for it like I did with the mm -hmm. Batman yeah. Superman. Like, I like sort of like marking down that I like the film or like just having something to do with it, and that's the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, like, with Endgame, I did it because like I'm really excited for Endgame, but I can't make a video yet. Yeah. So, you see, I'll animate the trailer. I don't really like doing it because there's not as much creativity in it and like it's not as original as I'd like to be. But sometimes it's fun recreating the shots. Mm -hmm. But plus it shows how talented you are because they really look amazing, especially when you see them side by side like that. It's like, wow, that's spot on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I really like making it exact. And, and uh, one of them was, it was from the movie. It was from uh, uh, Star Wars Episode Seven: Force Awakens, the Kylo Ren and Finn, um, Finn and Rey battle, a uh, lightsaber <laughs> battle. And then that was that was taken directly from the movie, correct? Yeah, at first it was supposed to be a direct creation. Like, I was going to use the audio from the movie, too. Mm -hmm. but it was really early when I started making it, and I couldn't find decent footage of the film. So, like, the first few, I think the first, th like, 30 seconds of that video, you can actually match it up with the movie, and mm -hmm. it'll play exactly the same. But the rest was just, yeah, then I just quit. Okay. Well, it's, it's, I couldn't tell. I didn't. Line it took up me back to side, the but, movie, so yeah, but, no, it looked great. Uh, I thought you, yeah, that was nailed pretty, pretty good there. I enjoyed that. Um, you mentioned just a little while ago, so let's just go into this. Let's go into the MBU. What is the MBU? 
MU, it's like basically an, an MCU, like a Marvel Cinematic Universe, just with brick films that we put together. Well, not me, that I joined. Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of brick filmers, and we connect all our films. It's kind of cool, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a website. Um, and a, yeah. And, a, I, and if I'm not correct, is Jam Pot Studios, is he the main one of the main people that uh, uh, yeah, does that? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure who all like the founders are, but yeah, he's one of them. Okay. Got a few names here like Eggy Yolk 2002, Jam Pot Studios, Lone Clone, Rad Visuals, Aubrey Studios, a few mm-hmm. others down there. But um, it's all, you know, it's all connected and some of the stories actually go from one animator to onto another animator. Does that sound yeah. right? That's cool. That's cool. Um, and um, how long, do you know how long the uh, MBU has been around for? I don't actually. That's a good question. Probably. Okay. Mm-hmm. Probably around 2004 or 14. I'm not sure, but um, that's a long time. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people involved. A lot, a lot of, of people, big names as well. A lot of big names so. in there. About half of them are members. That's one of the uh, groups I haven't done as good a job of uh, reaching out to to try to get them to become a part of the uh, Brick Filmers Guild. But uh, definitely a lot of uh, great folks in there. Um, speaking of, uh, I guess Marvel and, and DC to a certain degree, you've got a really uh, a passion for the source material. Um, do you have a preference between Marvel and DC? Um, depends. <laughs> <laughs> Probably leaning more towards Marvel, just because it's what I grew up on. Uh huh. That's cool. That's cool. You you had one, and Nick Fury was in it, and someone voiced Nick Fury and nailed the part. Uh, here we go. Is uh, uh, Captain America reinstated? Yeah, he did a great job, actually. He did. And this is, I think, Gary Scales. Yeah, Gary Scales. Yeah, excellent. is that a friend of yours? No, we got him through the MBU. I think Jack did cast him for me. Okay, well, okay. Jack, Jack nailed that one there. Yeah. And Nuke's hair was really cool. Did you paint that? No, that's actually like a really old Lego piece, and it's just gold already golden. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah that was a real. That was an awesome video. I mean, you know, there's certain ones for me that really stand out, and there that was definitely one of them. A lot of cool things there. Between the voicing and the nukes hair and the out of socket again um somebody took some pills i thought that was really well animated. yeah he did the nukes. yeah nukes. yeah mm-hmm. so it was, it was that was a good one i enjoyed that thank you um lego deadpool versus wolverine 2 that's uh that's within about a year of happening um i i see someone's name in here on hod shetra and has shut through, yeah. That's one of my friends. One of your friends is he a college friend or before that? Yeah, he's I've known him since high school, I think. Okay, so high school guy. And he's has he helped out on a lot of um Yeah, he's like, usually there a lot of the time when I'm animating. Oh, that's cool. And he likes writing a bit, so he wrote the original Lego Deadpool vs. Wolverine and mm-hmm. that kind of blew up, so then like he wanted to make a second one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we're writing a third one. Nice. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, not, at least you're not in your basement all by yourself. <laughs> or yeah. Or by yourself. The music uh, worked really well in that one, too. I know you, you probably just found some um, uh, royalty-free royalty free music, but that one, it really gelled well in there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look into getting... Like, I always take a lot of time looking for the music because I like it, music kind of makes or breaks the scene. I agree. I agree. Um, I'm very picky about music too. If if Dave picks out some music, I'm like, no, I don't like that. And if I don't like it, nobody else is gonna like it because I'm picky. Yeah, even like sometimes sacrificing, like even getting the copyright just for the good music is worth it sometimes. Mm-hmm. At least there's a lot a lot of sources now for royalty free music, which is definitely very helpful. Mm-hmm. Also takes a lot of patience to look through them all as well, but. There's a couple of really good um, brick films you have on your extras channel. Um, I thought Clean, which I believe was a college project for you, uh, that was awesome. I, yeah, that should be on your main I'm channel. I'm surprised it was, it was on your so main. so good. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I don't know why I didn't put it on my main channel. I forget the reason. You still can. <laughs> I mean, it only has like just, you know, 1,200, just over 1,200 views, but it, it is amazing, and I, I think definitely main channel worthy i really enjoyed that a lot Thank i, you. I yeah. hope you got an a plus on that 
I did, yeah. I yeah. Actually did. <laughs> I also liked your uh, skateboarding video. Um, do you skateboard? No, I don't. Okay, well, it kind of had to feel like you knew what skateboarding was about with that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, like a segment that I did for my friend's film. He made like a skateboarding film for okay. a contest. Cool, cool, cool. And it was like, yeah, he had one part where the skateboarder turned into a Lego guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Now, do you do any um, filming in school? Like, have they allowed you to use, like, any of their rooms or any of their equipment? Yeah, we use their equipment for most of the films that we make for projects. But we don't really have access to everything yet because we're only second years. So. Is that mostly live action type equipment? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think, though, I think some of the computers at our school have Dragon Frame on them, though. Well, that's sweet. Which I've been looking, yeah, I think I might look into that. Mm. What do you, what do you edit with? I edit on my laptop. Uh, what, what software? A mix of Premiere and iMovie. Okay. Okay. Cool. So like, now the, the people more that... title sequence stuff, mm -hmm. I'll probably, oh, I no, go. go ahead. Pardon? No, go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted. I'm bad at that. Uh, for the more, like, intricate stuff, my friends, my friend Anhead, I use, like, his Premiere. He has, like, one that I've used before, but mostly it's actually just iMovie. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, now, do, you, do your um, college buddies know who you are? <laughs> How big you are on YouTube? Yeah, they do. Some of them do, yeah. <laughs> Is that good or bad? Uh, I think it's a, it's okay. It, like I've gotten a few people ask me to come on projects because of it. I bet. Yeah, like I've done a few stop motion things. Yeah, that's awesome. Or maybe you've inspired awesome. other people to do the same. Yeah, one of my friends reached out because he's doing stop motion for a school project, and he had a lot of questions. Your film, The End, uh, a short Lego film. Uh, I think it was. Um, was that filmed as a school project or just a fun project on your own? Yeah, that was my university like acceptance project. That in one day? Well, yeah. The, okay. Wait, wh oh, which one are we the, talking the, about? The Sorry. end was the one where it's the fight. Uh, uh, oh, there's a lot right, of clay. Right. So one day was what got you into college, though. We'll get yeah. to that in one second. Um, yeah, the end was just something random, yeah. Okay, really I love that. Watched, I watched a movie, and it kind of inspired me. You did a lot of work with clay. Was that fun to uh, animate on top of the clay? Yeah, that was probably the most clay I've seen in one of your films. Yeah, I didn't really like it, which is why I don't do it anymore. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people animate on clay, so I wanted to try it. But I just, I don't like it because there's no, like, track. Like, the Lego bricks are good for tracking the figure. Yeah. I guess, but, like, the clay, it's just... Also, I used really bad clay. Okay. <laughs> So maybe just better clay helps, but did you have any issues with the clay um, uh, discoloring your Lego? No, I don't think so. That's actually. good. That's good. I think the wrong clay can sometimes get you in trouble there. That's cool. True. Well, I really enjoyed that. It had a lot of high energy to it. Um, my only thing there would be maybe shorten the uh, the intro of it, uh, the yeah. worded part. But that's sounded like it was a, a, a story you had in your head going that still yeah, was pretty was darn interesting. But it was like kind of long but otherwise the film rocked um on to what i think might be one of my favorite ones you did and this is what pretty much got you into college uh one day um a short lego film it's a really powerful film um it's kind of one of your rare non-superhero films um but it was really well done and um one of my favorites um it has almost two hundred thousand views 1400 comments which is crazy and over five thousand likes um, yeah, when you can tell a story like that without actually speaking, um, that just says volumes about, you know, the talent there. It, it was beautifully done. So, and that was done for, uh, to, to, as, a, uh, as a get you into college project? Yeah, there were three, the three schools that I applied to for film, the theme was kind of similar. So that, the one day video that it's on YouTube is the fourth version of the film. There are like three others with different endings to like suit the theme for different schools. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> yeah, and then I put them all together. You can kind of tell when you watch the video because the ending is color graded a little bit differently from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because I put together like, I put together the longest version for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was one I made for three schools. Wow. Will it work? Mm -hmm. Was the parrot in the tree at the end, was that 
done for any particular reason at all? I'm just curious. Yeah, that was supposed to be like his the father okay. looking down, uh, like okay. as the bird. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. A few cool. people got that, I think. Excellent. Well, I, I love that. So if you know yeah, yeah. anybody out there hasn't seen this mo- uh, um, brick film, it's definitely uh, one of the must watches. I, I I think that was one of the first ones I saw that you did. Um, and I was like, wow, I got to, you know, I, I got introduced to you. Uh, I think it was probably 2000 is whenever you did the, uh, podcast with, uh, DK, a uh, dark Knight, or yeah, just yeah. DK. Um, that's when I got introduced to you. I kind of, um, didn't pay too much attention probably from 2014 to 16. I was buried in doing audio videos and I didn't pay too much attention to what anybody else was doing. But about 2016, when that came out, uh, I was introduced to you and, um, and I, been a fan ever been since. Been a fan ever since. So thanks, DK. <laughs> what was that other? Um... Oh, the other podcast you on you were on um, was a really a good podcast. Yeah, he was um, great. That was the superhero uh, mini superheroes today official. Yeah. Uh, great podcast. Um, I think he's only done one though. <laughs> Pardon? I think he's only done one, but it was really good. He did a great job with that podcast. Yeah, he did. He was like really enthusiastic about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. He was very comfortable. I, I admire that in, in anybody who who does podcasts and stuff. That yeah, he was just he was great to listen to. It sounded like you guys were best friends and just shooting the breeze. <laughs> yeah, breeze. <laughs> yeah, that's the other word I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that you I think you mentioned in that was uh, one of your secrets to success was actually just making friends. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, that really stuck with me that you've uh, made a conscientious, conscientious effort to make friends online and make alliances and, and, and allies with lots of, lots of folks that do similar um, filming. And, and that stuck with me as a, one of the things you said in that podcast. Yeah. Um, I, that's like the most important thing. Because like even you finding out about me through like a friend of mine's podcast, just like stuff like that helps you grow. Mm-hmm. Well, that's half the reason uh, we started making the podcast years ago is one, I, I did want to just make friends with all these people doing like, like, like uh, artwork. And two, I wanted to learn from people because I was actually doing it professionally for those two years and I needed to uh, game up. And, uh, and I figured making a podcast, talking to uh, great brick filmers was a good way to do it. Now um, it's less and it's more about just making friends and having a fun podcast. But uh, um, I'm glad we... But you always get cool tips and different mm-hmm. uh, animating styles, which is always very helpful. True. During that podcast, uh, you spoke about meeting. Uh, so I think you've met with another brick filmer, um, Huxley Bird. Yeah. Um, and did you guys actually? You guys met up, and did you work on a project together? We we had like so many plans to work on stuff together, but when he came, it was just like. We had so much fun just interacting and like doing things. He, we never did anything together. Oh, that's so fun! Yeah. What the weekend that he came over, I was animating Tron, and I was gonna get him to do a few shots, like animate a few shots of it. But like, yeah, we just did so much, and then came home and crashed. <laughs> that's quite all right. So I guess he's gonna have to make another visit then. Yeah, we might go visit him this summer in LA. Oh, see, okay, oh, he's from LA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. There's a lot of folks out in L.A. Yeah, definitely. Of course, a lot of folks coming to Atlanta, too, so yeah, we're, Atlanta, we're, Atlanta's we're, getting there. We're getting there. We're getting better. Yeah, I th- our first guest was f- from Toronto, but he lives in L.A. now, um, Paul Hollingsworth. The, oh, he's from Toronto? Yeah, yeah. He uh, nah. left there, I think, in the early 90s and uh, moved down to L.A. with a, a bag full of Lego and a camera. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're actually our third Canadian podcast. Who's the other one? The second one was Monsieur Caron. French Canadian. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he uh, he had to do a, his uh, podcast in a second language, so i got to give him credit there. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I've noticed uh, uh, you've had a lot of really good success with is, uh, I guess, curating your Instagram following. You have oh, to, 25,000 yeah. followers and I'm 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 we are horrid at uh, Instagram. I think we probably have two followers. So <laughs> but we don't really do much there. Um what do you uh how did you get so many followers on uh Instagram? I think there's like a really big community for like just Lego photos in general on Instagram. Like I think 
probably more than half of my followers don't even really watch me on YouTube. They just like, there's a, like a lot of people who like Lego pictures on Instagram. It's so like do, a whole other community. You do mostly pictures there. I don't think you do much with videos on yeah, that. Right? I don't really post any of my videos there. Okay. Maybe see, I just don't find it. I miss um, Vine because Vine worked well with Twitter and I have fun with Twitter. So, you know, you could do something on Vine and then automatically post it there. So I have a hard time with Instagram because we don't really have, it's not on our phone really and it doesn't work with the computer. So it's yeah. kind of hard for us to, to do the Instagram thing. Which is a yeah. shame because yeah. it is a very popular social media outlet. Mm -hmm. So it also takes a lot to like. You gotta you have to be really consistent on Instagram. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably not for us then. <laughs> so uh, I, I think you worked on an actual claymation project uh, somewhat recently. Something called Papa Lewis. Can you tell us oh, about that? That was. I think that that was a really long time ago. Oh, it was actually. a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, it was uploaded a lot later than it was made. So this I, was not made for university? That, no, that was for a high school assignment. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it had a lot of really cool effects in it. I think the maybe the mustache uh, was clay. There was oh, a lot of the whole thing. It was, thing it was really cool. Yeah, it was really, really good. Was that the first time you actually worked with clay? And then you that's when you started using it with your Lego? That was the third time, I third think. Time. Yeah, yeah it was grade really 11. Cool, cool, that was cool. nice. Yeah, because my, my teacher told me I wasn't allowed to do Lego uh, assignments just because he thought it was, like, cheating. So, <laughs> Has he, he ever worked with Lego? <laughs> yeah, so he said I could, if I wanted to do stop motion, I could only do clay. Wow. Oh. Oh. So. But I think that probably helped. Maybe that, that you know, because your use of clay with your in your Lego videos are, are so well done. So maybe yeah, maybe he did you a favor. Yeah. And maybe he should do some Lego animating and realize, no, that's not cheating. That's hard work. <laughs> Especially the out-of-arm stuff, out-of-socket. Yeah. Um, I liked a lot of your uh, behind-the-scenes and your time-lapse and your updates you had on your um, um, Extras channel. Um, uh Thing. I mentioned that earlier, but you've definitely got Lego uh, coming out of the woodwork in your house. Um, I like the time lapse. It's neat to see uh, that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, do more of that, actually. You should do more of that. I loved it. Yeah. Um, um. So uh, I noticed you, you did use the backdrops in the um, uh, Black Panther. Do you have used uh, those big back? backdrops for uh, scenic in any other uh, brick films? Yeah, those backdrops in Black Panther are the exact ones that I used in one day. Okay. Oh, okay. And you said you found those where? Just on Google. Okay. And you printed them out or? Yeah, I printed them okay. out. I like cool. FedEx. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely would like to have some cool background stuff. Uh, there was, there's some cloud patterns you can get. Um, a uh, few of the brick foamers have done that. Um, we did that. Well, we got it down in our basement. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty decent. I haven't really done any animations with it, but there's like a really cool cloud. Um, uh, it's like you can buy like a 25 foot roll of the stuff. That's like three or four feet oh. tall and that's pretty decent, but I'd love to have some good, uh, backgrounds. Yeah. That must be really useful. Yeah. Yeah. 20. Wow. That's long. Yeah. It's really big. It allows for mistakes <clears throat> and cutting and. The thing, yeah. there's a little bitty micro, um, uh, what would you say, kind of um, bends or folds in it. So it's not, when you look at it real close, it's it's not as clean as I think it should be. But if it's a little bit fuzzy in the background, out of focus, that um, it's probably pretty good. Yeah. Um, it wasn't expensive either, yeah. not considering the size. Yeah. Uh, what do you record your uh, voiceovers with? Uh, well, like when I do my own or other people's? Oh, your own, other people's kind of whatever gear they have. Well, when I used to do all my voice acting, my friend has like, I think it's a blue snowball. Okay. Yeah, but I don't really do it anymore. Like hardly anything I record is myself now. But yeah. So you mainly just get other people to do your, your voice acting for you? Yeah, mostly. The only time I record things myself now is if I'm like foleying a sound effect. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and how do you record that? That I just record from like my microphone in my headphones. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. If it's like a quick little sound. Okay. Okay. So what are you what are you working on now? 
now uh, I'm doing a, I, de- my, f- the first video I'm working on now is a John Wick versus Punisher. Okay, so that's a neat yeah. blend. And then I think I'm going to recreate the throne room fight scene from The Last Jedi. Oh, nice. cool, cool. Because cool. the new battle pack came out and it has like the two other designs of the guards. Mm-hmm. And when Hux visited me, he gave me the other set that came with like Snoke and all of them. Okay. Yeah, so I might. I'm thinking maybe to wait till the closer to the release of episode nine. Mm-hmm. But. I do need something to animate right now since I'm at like my apartment with nothing. So are you are you a big Star Wars fan? Yeah. What do you like more, the the prequels, the originals, or the sequels? The originals. But okay. I do really like The Last Jedi. I know there's like a lot of controversy around it. I did really like it. I liked it a lot more on the second and third viewing of it. It ended up being a better than I thought. There were some there's some things that I just can't get over, uh, but on, on like episode seven and eight, but for the most part, they're they're good movies. I had no yeah. problem with it. I enjoyed it. I didn't like the Star Killer base. I thought it was a little bit Death Star on steroids, really. Yeah, that's true. That's um, true. So and that and there was just some little things, but you know, I think I think it's Star Wars. I'm glad that they're Star Wars. They're, they're making them. Yay. That Solo though, because that was the last one that we saw. Oh my gosh. I like Solo actually. Solo's probably my third favorite all time Star Wars. I behind spot four and five you enjoyed it yeah i loved it i watched it i watched it really late though just because of all the like the controversy around it and i'm mad that i didn't get to see it in theaters yeah well yeah. it's 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 awesome i don't yeah, know why anybody was, had a problem with it Ron howard yeah definitely it was one of my favorites by far I, I loved every bit of it from beginning to end there wasn't one part that i had a problem with i just i loved it all it kept me just thrilled the entire time yeah, and just like visually, it looked so nice. Yeah. I mean, I think you know, I don't know, I I don't know how anyone can have a problem with it. So I mean, I actually had lower expectations going into it, and I was like, yeah. "What? How could anybody say anything bad?" Definitely one of my favorites. I loved it so much. The casting was like it was great. He did Perfect. such a good job. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for more. It's like it it left me wanting more. It's like okay, I'm ready to watch this like every week. I want a, a series yeah, of this. Yeah, like a V show. Absolutely. I want a Lando spinoff too. Me too. I don't. I, didn't they say they were doing that? They did, but then think, after everything was said and done, uh, I oh. think Disney put a lot of things on the back burner. That's unfortunate. Yeah, but I yeah. thought they said Solo maybe was uh, they were going to do a series of that. I would be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Well, Lando, in it. right? <laughs> yeah, he he kind of everybody was great in that movie, but he stole that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Donald. Um, where do you get your Lego collection? I think you mentioned a little bit earlier you acquired some of it from your sister, but um, where do you generally get it? Uh, mostly just from the Lego store. Mm-hmm. There's one near my parents' work, mm-hmm. so they always used to like walk over during their lunch break and get me all the new sets. Uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you, do you ever get any from like garage sales or uh, secondhand? No, I, I don't think I have. I looked into like, I think, is it Bricklink? Is Brick, it Bricklink, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I've never gotten around to it. Everything I've that's why I don't have much like just spare bricks lying around. Most of the things I have are either sets or deconstructed sets. But no, I don't think I've ever bought any second hand Lego. You have tons of minifigures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh do you listen to music or any uh T V or podcast while you animate? Yeah, I listen to mostly I listen to like music related stuff. Cool. Like music news. Oh, okay. Like rap music and stuff. Cool, 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 cool. Um, let's see. What else do we have in here? Um, yeah, any, any fun stories of uh, or funny stories of working with anybody or just weird things that have happened while animating? Bumped your head. <laughs> How tall are you? Because you sound like you're pretty tall. I'm six foot, like just over six foot. Okay, that's, that's pretty well, it's tall. It's not 6'10", but that's <laughs> taller than <Yep>. me. <laughs> Our son is like 6'4", so it's like I can't even, you know, give him a kiss How? on the cheek anymore. He's 20. Oh, that's really tall. I wish I was 6'4". Six 6'4 four. Six four is really tall. I can't imagine getting into an airplane seat at 6'4", though. That's true. Um, 
I think we've kind of gotten through everything here. Is there anything I'm missing? Yeah, is there anything you want to bring up? Anything you're excited about? or? Um, not got, that I can think of. Got two more years of, of university to go? Yeah. You, yep. think, you think you'll be moving to Los Angeles after that, or are you going to uh, make it in the uh, Canadian film business? Uh, maybe Los Angeles. Moving to Los Angeles would be like ideal. But yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah. Scary to think about. Yeah, I can imagine. That's far away from your family. And... Yeah. yeah. Cool, I know if cool. I was a mom, I'd be like, no, no, stay. <laughs> I do have a lot of family in LA, though. Oh, that's oh good. That's okay. Good. My cut, my aunt, my aunt lives there, and then her brother lives there as well. So my uncle. Well, then that makes it a little bit easier, at least, especially for visiting. Yeah. Have you taken in on uh, this? This kind of goes back to the the makeup stuff you're doing with your sister. Did have you done any makeup classes in college, or is that not a part of the curriculum? No, I haven't. Is it? Is there? Are there any makeup courses a part of the um, film curriculum? I don't think so. There might be in the more like theater like departments yeah I, I was in theater i had to take a a, a um, um a class for uh, yeah but yeah, sure i did a pretty know. clear At killer clean on there might be in the later years but not okay yet. well at least you've got some experience with it yeah i think that comes from just because i like drawing a lot uh, do you so do like, a lot of drawing just for um for fun yeah i draw like every day you should post those on your instagram i should that's, that's yeah, definitely. especially if you're doing it every day. I think right. uh, um, Sean, Sean Willits, Willits does that. Filmy guy. Yeah, filmy guy. Yeah, he's he's, he's an, amazing. He actually does storyboarding for, for legit real stuff, too. So, I mean, he's he's quite the artist there. So, definitely. Yeah, you um, should definitely post that. that. And you definitely need to put clean on your main channel. It's so worth it. Yeah, I think it's like just, I think the reason I didn't do it is it's kind of scary posting anything that's like not lego to my main channel just because it's so branded with like akash lego production true yeah, not quite yeah, i'm always been scared but i, I, I think, can understand that yeah it's like half lego so maybe yeah i might do it you know um also before i let you go i don't want to uh, uh not put a shout out to dt98 films darren um he's worked with you a couple times is that correct yeah he has yeah, awesome. I think he was a part of your Kylo Ren, uh, Finn and Ray um, thing, uh, yeah, along with he, Soli Man Productions. Yeah, he also made my channel banner that I had for a lot of years. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And then... Um, I want to bring up in the uh, Lego Captain America, the Civil War two? Part 2. Yeah, the Iron Man helmet going on and off. That was beautiful. Oh, I mean, it almost looked like it was like melting, melting away... Like when it, he took it off and I'm putting it on, I guess I, the so, reverse of that. So like an After Effects of, um, thing you did there? or I was just masking. Masking, okay. Well, yeah, just frame by frame. Okay. That looked great. Looked great. And that was kind of a two-parter where you were colla doing a collaboration with Joe Bor 1777? Yeah. They did the first one and yours mm -hmm. was the second one. Mm -hmm. um, so that one was really cool. And I think that's the uh, that one was the one that had the uh, big Ant-Man. Yeah, um, and, the for the buildable. And there was some uh, some cool close ups in there that just really uh, pointed out some cool action where I think both Iron Man and uh, Captain America were just wailing on each other, and it was a close up of them just beating on each other, kind of the front of their face. And I thought that scene worked really well. Um, and did D DT Films do your uh, mouth animation for Daredevil? Um, oh yes, the recreation. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Because you normally don't do mouth movement, and I think he does, and it said it was edited by him. So that was pretty cool. One of the things, another thing's in there, there were some ceiling shots in the background. Were those, yeah. was that ceiling really there, or did y'all uh, fix that in post and make the ceiling? Yeah, really that, that ceiling was really, that was really hard just because the way it was shot in the show, it was mm -hmm. like the lights you could see in the yeah. ceiling you could see. But yeah, that was all in set. Okay, that, okay. that was cool. I, I really, I really like that. I love when I can see a ceiling in a background, or, or you know, because you it, don't see it very often. You don't always see it in brick films because yeah. it's, it's, it's just really hard to do. Um, you also did an anti-bullying film for uh, something called Pink Day or something. Yeah, I didn't even know that that was an only Canadian movie until <laughs> like a lot of my viewers didn't know what it was. Okay, well, that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It had a good message, so I liked that. Yeah, definitely. 
It's from my mom's school. Like she shows it to her at her assembly every year. Oh, that's awesome! Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's like a big thing in schools here. I think that it should be a a big thing everywhere. Yeah, I forget what it was. It was just like an incident. So then, like on that day, everyone wears pink. Okay. I'd love that. It's one of my favorite colors. But I love things like that that have a good message, especially anti-bullying. That's so important, especially in school. People have no idea um, the damage that that does. Um, it's very sad. So kudos on that. Oh, and you, before we let you go, uh, we, we did notice you have a whole bunch of great mocks that you've created. I think they're uh, on display on your extras channel. Uh, the Tony Stark Malibu Mansion is really oh, awesome. Yeah. And the uh, Lego Avengers headquarters was really cool. Did you actually make animations using those uh, mocks, or is that just for for making the mock only? Yeah, those were primarily for animations, just because I had like limited Lego back then. Mm-hmm. But then I thought they were cool, so I turned them into mocks. I animated a lot of videos in the Avengers headquarters one, mm-hmm. but the Tony Stark mansion was more just a display. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. And did you make the Batmobiles uh, from uh, scratch? Pardon? You, there's a couple of Batmobiles, uh, Arkham Knight, Batmobile Mach, and then Mach version 2. Did you make those from scratch? All yeah, I did, because I really like the video game. Okay, wow. those 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 look cool. Those are awesome. That's impressive. Those are, are re- those like fall apart, though, if you move them. Uh, uh, like they, uh, they do not. A lot of people told me to like put it on Lego Ideas, and I was like, no, this would not get approved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. That's too much. All right. All right. Um, All right. Well, I think we let's like I said, unless there's something else that you want to share, we'll definitely make sure everybody has all of your links to see all of your amazing work. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Well, it's been great talking with you. Yeah, I know. We've really enjoyed watching your videos and getting to see all of your, you know, it's fun. That's the one thing, you know, especially for me. Um, you know, we Dave does so much research, but we get to watch all the videos, and it's like, oh, wow, this is just, it's cool. Because normally I don't, I don't watch videos unless, you know, somebody I know is, you know. In it. Um, and well, yeah, I mean, or yeah, I mean, or I just happen to see it on, on Twitter because I'm just not online that often. So this gives me the opportunity of seeing this great work and it's it's so enjoyable. So um, I'm sure most people already know you and your amazing work, but um, we're happy to bring it out there some more and share all of your links so that everybody can make sure they catch it. Thank you. Yeah, even just like talking since you guys watch all of them, it's like a walk down like memory lane. Like, you bring up stuff that, like, I don't really remember until you say it. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's, like, it's nice. Cool. Oh, awesome. Uh, good well, memories. like I said, you've been you've been fun to get to know and so polite. And I just, um, it, it's just been really been sweet and made me smile. So thanks mm. for all that. And we look forward to seeing all of the rest of the things that you come out Brick with. Brick Films and other. Um, look forward to seeing anything else you make uh, in the film-wise. Yeah. And this good. year it will definitely be more stuff that's non-Brick Films. Cool. Mm-hmm. We're happy to see it all. And good awesome. luck in university. You keep up the, the great work there. That's important. Thank you. And get your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a mom. <laughs> all right. Well, have a wonderful week ahead. And thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All righty. Take care. Me too. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks so much to Akash for spending time with us. And thanks to everyone who stuck with us through this entire podcast. Please check out our sponsors and partners on the Brick Filmers Guild homepage, and don't forget to check out Akash's amazing Brick Films on his YouTube channel. We want to give a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters, Spugastu, Something's Awry Productions, Frame 5 Studios, Mind Game Studios, Dark Dragon Films, Forest Fire 101, Sanjira, Spencer Katz, and Paganimation. You guys really inspire us to keep creating more of these in-depth conversations with the world's great brick filmers. If you would like to sponsor one of our podcasts, please contact me through one of our social media sites. The sponsors we have are always brick film related and are products that we use ourselves and highly recommend. We would like to thank Kevin McLeod for his wonderful music, which we use for our podcasts and in our brick films. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, please rate and comment. We'd really appreciate that. So, until next time, bye, y'all.